Hey guys, what is Kraken? This is Kraken Nation here coming at you with today with a competitive analysis where you guys can take a look at Pokemon in the Pilot region in Generation 9 in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and how you can set yourself up to have as much success as possible through your journey in this region and how you can set yourself up to be a competitive battler and set these Pokemon up in ways where they can be as competitively viable as possible. Also so you can get some background knowledge on these Pokemon, how you can build around them and how you can build against them, what you can know to look out for when you're playing against, a, for example, today's Pokemon, Brute Bonnet. So Brute Bonnet is an alternate, alternate form of Amoongus, and let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. So right off the bat, this is a Grass Dark type. This is a typing that we've actually seen now with Meow Scrotta, but we've also seen with things like Zarud, for example, in the past, Sif Uh It's a pretty common typing, and unfortunately, it is a pretty poor typing. Offensively, it's not completely terrible. Dark type especially is a decent offensive type when you have knockoff, but this doesn't have that either. And so this typing leaves it extremely vulnerable to a lot of weaknesses. Most commonly, U-Turn is going to absolutely clap this thing's cheeks and you're going to be in a tough spot. So Grass Dark Typing is unfortunately going to hold a back, but otherwise on paper has a lot of, this Pokemon has a lot going on for it. The ability of Protosynthesis, as we've seen, when you're holding Booster Energy or you're um, in Sun, it gives your highest base stat a plus 50% boost. Uh, booster Energy being just a one-time use, which is a useful ability, but unfortunately I don't think Brute Bonnet is quite the Pokemon to take great advantage of that, at least by holding Booster Energy. If you're going to be using utilizing that, it's probably going to have to be under the context of a Sun Team. And Brute Bonnet doesn't have any real abilities to, or moves I should say, to really utilize and capitalize on Sun. So, and I guess it does get Synthesis, so that's one thing. But overall, the ability is not going to be the most useful as it was, for example, on Great Tusk in the previous video. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. Without further ado, though, let's take a look at this thing's stats. We've got 115 HP and 99 in both defenses, so this thing is fairly tanky for sure. Especially because you have 55 speed. You're slow as dirt, so you're going to mostly be investing in your bulk anyway. So you're probably going to go max HP and max attack or a, a defensive max out on most of your sets, in which case Brute Bonnet's going to be quite tanky with that really high HP stat coupled with pretty decent defenses, especially because it's a good mixed defensive uh, pool. And the problem, of course, is going to be that the typing holds you back, but at least you have the stats to back it up. 127 attack stat, very respectable, a very, very excellent attack stat. Uh, and then it's got a couple cool moves that make allow it to take you to take use of that 79 special attacks that not quite terrible but definitely not a stat you can be utilizing especially when you have so much more going for you on your physical offense um so overall you're just looking at a pokemon that has a really pretty tanky stat distribution with a really viable attack stat but definitely poor typing and a speed stat that may hold it back just a little bit so taking a look at notable moves, uh, as you can see, it's a pretty short list here, but it does get the moves that it needs to get. So it does get coverage to hit steel types, which for example, if we look at something like Zarud in the past, was something that Zarud really struggled with. So it does get close combat, which is a very viable move to hit those opposing steel types. It gets Crunch and Sea Bomb for its stabs, but Sucker Punch is actually a really good move on a Pokemon like Brute Monet because of course you want to have priority because it allows you to mitigate your otherwise god-awful speed. And Sucker Punch, usefully, is a priority move that also is stab on Brute Bonnet. So it's a really, really good move for Brute Bonnet in a lot of various settings. Also get Zen Headbutt to hit things like opposing poison types, for example, which is quite helpful because otherwise you will be kind of getting walled by those as well. So between your, your coverage moves, you have moves to hit steel types, you have moves to hit poison types, you got a, your stabs and you got a priority move. So it's got a very good offensive move pool to make use of. Spore, of course, is the Amoonga special uh, and it's one of the better moves in competitive Pokemon. Um, of course, if you're operating in like Showdown, for example, you're gonna have to deal with Sleep Claws and whatnot, but Spore is an incredibly effective move uh, that just instantly cripples your opponent's team and whatever's in front of you. Synthesis for some recovery is quite nice, and then we're gonna, we're gonna, we have Taunt. You probably won't be able to run Taunt. You don't have space on most of your Brute Bonnet sets, but Taunt is there. But overall, some combination of Spore, your attacking moves, Synthesis is going to be, I feel like, your go-to setup. Uh, taking a look out of the first set I wanted to show off today, guys, I'm going to take a look at just Tanky Attacker. Um, you've got a few different directions you're going to be able to go with Brute Bonnet, but this is the set that I think probably has uh, the most chance at being viable. Uh, making use of that Spore ability, we're going to run 252 HP, 252 Attack, and Adam Nature to maximize our offensive output while giving us as much bulk as possible. Item Leftovers is going to be the item of choice here. We can't run Black Sludge, keep in mind, because we are no longer a Poison type. Grass Poison would have been a significantly better typing on this thing than Grass Dark, to be completely honest with you. But at least you get Stab Sucker Punch, which we're going to run, because that is such a good move on Brute Bonnet. We're going to run Seed Bomb as our go-to attack. You could run Crunch in one of these spots, but I decided to run Seed Bomb because I think 
do want to diversify a little bit there. We're going to run Spore just because that is such a great move. You could run, you know, a Zen Headbutt here as well on one of these four moves as well if you wanted to hit those poison types. I'm going to suggest Synthesis or Close Combat in the last spot. Close Combat obviously lets, allows you to have a really, oops, sorry about that, a really strong coverage move against those Steel types, but Synthesis gives you some recovery, which otherwise you don't have. Notably, the fact that this thing lost Regenerator holds it back a lot. Um, Amoongus, what makes Amoongus a good Pokemon to use is pretty much Spore plus Regenerator. It's a very good combo for any defensive Pokemon. It comes in, the opponent brings in an offensive mod to beat Amoongus, but they're afraid to do it because they're going to get put to sleep and then they can't beat Amoongus. Uh, Amoongus has Regenerator to get back out of there, so take a hit, heal up without having to click a move. Uh, so Protosynthesis is obviously not nearly as good a move. If, if this thing had Regenerator, I would have been a lot more excited about it. It's still pretty cool as is with things like Sucker Punch, Stat being Stab. I think that's a really cool niche for it to occupy, but you know, Regenerator would have been absolutely silly on this thing. Um, but so Close Combat's going to be an option, and then Synthesis if you want that recovery. Overall, it's, it's kind of up to you how you piece this set together, but I'd probably go on my default set, probably Sucker Punch, Seed Bomb, Spore, and then maybe, I, you really could decide if you want, if your team is in a position where you can beat opposing steals pretty comfortably, I might go for Synthesis. If you really need Brute Bonnet to be able to beat steel types on its own without having to switch out, you might want to opt for Close Combat. Um, <coughs> Taking a look at some general pros and cons of Brute Bonnet, uh, good offensive power with access to priority to mitigate speed like we talked about, good uh, Sucker Punch user makes this thing quite good in that regard, um, and respectable mixed bulk like we talked about is quite good, nice, 115 99, 99 is going to be quite respectable mixed bulk that will have success in a lot of matchups. Now unfortunately there is a little bit of problem where your base power, especially your stabs, are underwhelming because if you're clicking Sucker Punch, that's not a very high base power move. Seed Bomb is not a very high base power move. Crunch is not a very high base power move. Close Combat is fine, but it's not Stab. So it's got underwhelming base power on some of its moves. Losing Regenerator, like I talked about, really, really sucks. And it does have very poor speed. So if you're not clicking Sucker Punch, you're in a tricky situation where you're awful typing, which I probably should have listed as a con as well. You're really relying on that pretty decent bulk set, which you have some bulk, right? But overall, your defensive typing is so bad and you're so slow that if you're not clicking Sucker Punch, you're probably taking a big hit every single time. Um, so just gonna have to keep that in mind when you're using a Brute Bonnet. Taking a look at some team options, teammates to beat Steel, Flying, and Grass types are really appreciated. Like I talked about, if you're running close combat, you don't need to worry about Steel types as much, but Flying and Grass types are really tough for this Pokemon to break through, so a good Fire type or Ice type teammate might be very helpful to help you break through those Pokemon, especially an Ice type or a powerful Ice type coverage Pokemon would be very helpful because Brute Bonnet really can't break through opposing bulky grasses or opposing bulking flyings to save its life. Um, Pokemon that appreciates Spore setup chance is a little more niche, but if you have like a Sleeper, for example, uh, it may appreciate having a certain Pokemon put to sleep and giving it more setup opportunities throughout the match. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, is that, that can be a supportive role as well. Now, like I talked about, biggest threats, opposing flying types, steel types, also opposing grass types to a lesser extent. Um, kind of can be a problem. Now I say it less to a lesser extent because Brute Bonnet isn't necessarily afraid of grass types itself, right? So it's not a big of a problem. But opposing flying types will be the first and foremost problem for Brute Bonnet. Faster offensive Pokemon, like we talked about, can wear it down. And if Sucker Punch isn't doing a whole lot of damage, even though this thing has a decent amount of bulk, you are an absolutely trash tier defensive typing. Does not get a whole lot worse than Grass Dark, so you're going to be in a tough spot. And like I talked about, Grass types, it does do okay in the Grass types, but it also gets shut down by opposing Grass types. Notably, Keep in mind that Spore does not affect Grass types is kind of what I'm getting at with that point. You're not going to be able to click Spore because it fails every time you click it on an opposing Grass type. So Grass types can shut down uh, that niche that you're occupying with Brute Bonnet. And that's kind of like the whole Amoongus line's like claim to fame is uh, those that, that Spore ability in common with the Regenerator usually. So if you're losing Regenerator already, you lose Spore in that case. You need to be careful that your Brute Bonnet will be kind of, uh, kind of neutered in that regard. So guys, I am excited about this Pokemon. There is a lot going for it. I think that combination of that powerful Sucker Punch plus some uh, Axe to Spore, you know, some recovery moves, some other coverage moves, it does have a lot going for it that Amoongus didn't as an offensive Pokemon. You just need to be aware that it's not going to be filling the same role on a team that Amoongus was able to do, which is that defensive role, for example. But uh, let, me guys, let me know what you guys think about Brute Bonnet down in the comment section below. If I missed anything, be sure to let me know down there and I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, as well as if you guys want to see other Pokemon, you got to let me know down there and I'll get around to them as soon as I can. 
Uh, furthermore, if you're interested in Generation 9 draft format, we have a draft league starting up pretty soon. Information about that will be in our Discord link below. If you're interested in competitive Pokemon and want to have conversations with me or other high-level players about competitive Pokemon, I definitely recommend you make a pit stop. Check out our Discord link in the description box below, and that'll be a great place to talk about all of that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, guys. It is always so so appreciated how the channel grows when these uh we get, do these kinds of videos and people seem to really really appreciate and really enjoy them so that makes me really happy to see all in all though that will be all for brute mod today guys and otherwise kraken nation out